First, in terms of earthquakes, we, which we do cover in the new film, because there's a huge shale play in California, and in fact, there's a legacy thousand-acre oil field in uh, the center of Los Angeles, which is being drilled and fracked right on top of the Newport Inglewood fault line. Um, the, the, the earthquake study showed that earthquakes far away, um, you know, on the other side of the planet, could then trigger bigger earthquakes where they have injection well facilities. So injection well facilities are used for fracking waste. Fracking, you know, creates an enormous amount of wastewater. When they frack the wells with two to nine million gallons per well of uh, fluid and water, that fluid has to come back up and be disposed of somehow. The industry has a huge problem figuring out how to dispose of it, so they inject it back down into the ground. And what the report says is that fault lines are becoming critically stressed by the process of injection wells. It also says that the fracking itself can cause minor earthquakes. Josh, your your original film uh, has provoked uh, quite a bit of effort to discredit yeah. some portions of the film, especially the now legendary uh, portion of uh, people's uh, faucets uh, catching fire. Could you talk about the efforts of the industry to discredit your work? Well, the oil and gas industry has been attacking the film, the families in the film, the scientists in the film consistently for the last three years since it came out, and they're at it again with this new film. I, it's, it's extraordinarily disheartening to see that this is their strategy. It's deny, deny deny, spread money around, try to influence politicians, spend lots and lots of money in the media to convince Americans that it's a great idea to drill one to two million new gas wells. Uh, those are the projections. The oil and gas industry has leased more land than the total land mass of California and Florida combined, which means that a lot of those adjacent properties in these 34 states where the drilling campaign is going on are also influenced, so it's maybe twice that amount of area. Um, it's it really um, is shocking that what they're saying, similar to the way that they attack climate science, that some of these things are a, are a hoax, that they're not actually true. Um, th this is a really blatant attack on the science, on the, the, the way that this issue has been reported for the last three and a half years, and they also revealed themselves to be doing some kind of dastardly things in the background without us knowing about it. Let's go to Jeremiah G. Is that how you pronounce sure. his name? Yeah. Um, in Tioga County, Pennsylvania, explaining what it's like to live next door to land being leased to Shell Appalachia for gas drilling. Contaminants were running off the site, onto his property, and killing his family's pond. And under the ground, methane had migrated into their water well. Holy cow. The, uh, the clip ends with Jeremiah G. showing how he can light his tap water on fire. Yeah, well, this is very common, um, that gas migrates in from these leaking gas wells into aquifers and then people who are using their groundwater. Jeremiah G. here explains the situation with his water supply. You know I'll get a phone call in a few minutes asking why I was up here with a guy with a camera. We were told, point blank, that the word fresh water does not mean what you think it means. Fresh water means fresh to this site. Every bit of water that will be coming here um, in, in used in the frac tanks has already been used at a different site. Josh Fox. Talk about how the industry deals with communities. You have an astounding section in Gasland, too, uh, that has audio of the industry talking to each other, talking about how you, they're using military, and talking about how they consider you and the people uh, who are fighting back insurgents. Well, well this is audio that was uh, recorded by a blogger named Texas Sharon working for Earthworks, who was at an oil and gas industry conference, where they were discussing all the bad PR that they were getting um, and how to counter it. And what they go on to do is explain how they're using former PSYOPs officers, psychological operations officers, who are really coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan to uh, write local laws, to develop techniques to divide local landowners. Uh, that's Matt Pizzarella from Range Resources talking about that. Uh, Chesapeake um, then goes on to talk about people who are fighting the gas industry, like landowners, like you just saw Jeremiah G., as insurgents. And one of the PR spokespeople for Anadarko, another huge petroleum company, says that what they should actually do is download the counterinsurgency manual, um, which is a 300-odd page book about 
um, it, you know, how, how to deal with an insurgency um, in Iraq and Afghanistan. These are terms of war, and it was very, very shocking to see that. Um, but it, it goes hand in hand with a strategy that's very overt in the media, which is to buy, you can't turn on the t TV, except for perhaps this show, <laughs> where you're not going to see ads from the natural gas industry. And we're seeing also uh, editorials and these kinds of things on blog posts seeded to do things to try to discredit the, the very clear science, and in most cases, the, the science that the industry themselves did. Um, this is following the tobacco industry's playbook. The tobacco industry for decades um, sponsored bogus science, went out to try to create doubt in the media as to whether or not the cigarettes were harmful to people. and. That strategy was developed by a, a, a PR firm called Hill & Knowlton. The America's Natural Gas Alliance hired the same PR firm in 2009, and we're seeing that same kind of strategy of creating doubt and creating a false debate in the media over whether or not this drilling contaminates water. Well, just let's. Uh, I want to turn to Tom Ridge, the former governor of Pennsylvania, the first secretary of Homeland Security, and an outspoken supporter of the natural gas industry. Ridge says natural gas is a matter of economic security and energy independence. I want to go to a clip of his in an interview on the Colbert Report. Pennsylvania is uh, sitting on top of uh, something I think could be a. Uh, could lead a renaissance in America with regard to energy, not only in terms of creating jobs, but they, making us more secure, uh, less dependent on foreign sources. And so my job, and I do have a paid job as a consultant with the industry, is to uh, make sure as Pennsylvania that we take advantage of that, resources, uh, that resource and develop it in a way that's consistent with uh, workplace safety, with environmentally sound principles, and to help us become uh, create great jobs in Pennsylvania and become less dependent on foreign sources of fuel. And the host Stephen Colbert then asked Tom Ridge about the phenomena of flaming water. This was Ridge's response. Whether or not you want to send a billion dollars a day to foreign countries, some of whom were either unstable or unfriendly countries, it's a matter of whether or not you want a bunch of leaders in a bunch of countries deciding they're not going to increase their production of oil, which means our gas prices go through the roof. It's a matter of economic security. It's a matter of national security. That was Tom Ridge, former governor of Pennsylvania, the, uh, and, uh, and an outs uh, uns outspoken supporter of the natural gas industry. Well, Tom Ridge had a $900,000 contract to be the chief spokesman for the Marcellus Shale Coalition. At around the same time, we noticed that the Department of Homeland Security, which, well, of course, Tom Ridge was the first Department of Homeland Security chair, uh, the Pennsylvania Department of Homeland Security uh, started circulating bulletins to law enforcement that listed uh, anti-fracking organizations as possible eco-terrorists, which had no basis in reality, there had never been anything um, at all violent. These were people do doing democratic organi organizing an organization. Um, but uh, then it was discovered that the Department of Homeland Security was actually circulating those bulletins directly to the Marcel Shell Coalition and to other gas industry uh, lobbyists and stakeholders. Um, th this was a, a, a scandal in, in Pennsylvania, which ended up with the DHS head resigning. Um, but Tom Ridge and a lot of uh, three Pennsylvania governors governors in a row, Tom Ridge, Ed Rendell, and now Tom Corbett, have heavy ties to the gas industry and go on to advocate for fracking and drilling without disclosing those ties um, in the media. It's a situation where, uh, in a report by the Public Accountability Initiative called Fracking in the Revolving Door in Pennsylvania, they describe as having the reg regulatory agencies and the democracy itself being taken away from the citizens. And that's really the journey and, and the question behind this new film. The film is, um, you know, the first film features a lot of people lighting their water on fire. This is a film about the natural gas industry lighting our democracy on fire. And it's not just the industry. As you point out, I mean, Tom Ridge was former head of Homeland Security, former governor of Pennsylvania, now paid to speak for the energy industry. But then you have President Obama. Uh, last month, he delivered a major address on global warming and hailed natural gas drilling. Let's go to a clip. Now, even as we're producing more domestic oil, we're also producing more cleaner burning natural gas than any other country on earth. And again, sometimes there are disputes about natural gas, but, but let me say this. We should strengthen our position as the top natural gas producer because in the medium term at least, it not only can provide safe, cheap power, but it, it can also help reduce our carbon emissions. 
That was President Obama. Well, this is President Obama advocating for fracking without ever saying the word fracking, both domestically, also for export and around the world in an initiative to, to uh, promote shale gas and fracking around the world. What's really disappointing about this is that this is a moment when an American president has come forward and spoke, spoken about climate change and uh, exhibited its obvious and earnest desire to take on the problem. However, um, the emphasis on frack gas makes this plan um, entirely the wrong plan. The plan focuses on carbon dioxide, but how we count um, global warming potential is in carbon dioxide equivalents. And methane, which is leaking out of these sites in, in very large quantities, is a, a super greenhouse gas. It's up to 100 times more potent than CO2 in the atmosphere, which means if you have more than 1% methane leakage, it's like burning the gas twice. In the field, we're seeing 7 to 17% of total production methane leaking into the atmosphere moving from coal to frack gas um, doesn't give you any climate benefit at all. Um, so uh, the plan should be about how we're moving off of fossil fuels and onto renewable energy, which is what we know can power the planet as we with current technology. Um, so this What's stopping that? Well, you know, this administration has done a lot of meetings with the natural gas industry. We know that. Um, there is, I think, an undue influence of their uh, promotion of themselves on the policy. And what we're doing right now is asking President Obama, please, meet with the families and the scientists and engineers in the new film, give us an opportunity to make the case, have equal time. This president's legacy should not be one of just meeting with the corporations. He should meet with the people um, who are coming out and are saying, who are emblematic of thousands who are suffering at the hands of this huge drilling campaign. So we've submitted that, those letters to the White House, to the vice president, to the energy secretary, to Valerie Jarrett, and done this in a very public way, appealing to say, listen, you've, you can't go ahead and advocate for frack gas and try to deal with climate change at the same time. Time. It's a policy contradiction. And speaking of uh, speaking with the people, uh, uh, New York State has uh, uh, continues to have an ongoing, very uh, uh, vocal and extensive popular campaign that has actually been preventing Governor Cuomo from doing what a lot of people think he wants to do, which is go ahead with fracking here. In New York State, did something very unusual that other states didn't do. They they used democracy. <laughs> they did an environmental impact study, and that environmental impact study has comment periods. And New Yorkers flooded those comment sessions. To the latest comment review. Is it got 204,000 public comments by New Yorkers. This is unprecedented. The last record for pre-fracking issue on environmental impact study was 1,000 comments. So you've seen unprecedented outpouring of people in New York participating democratically, and that has stopped the most powerful industries on the face of the planet. Um, and it's still not over, of course. But I think people are seeing the citizens of New York, and the way that the government in New York has handled it to allow citizen participation as an example, and we can only hope that that is something that inspires people around the world to do the same.